How much money on average will an insurance company make off a one-year life insurance policy worth $50,000 if they charge $800 for the policy and you have a .9999 probability of surviving the year? Okay, so the first phrase I want to identify here is this phrase, how much money on average will an insurance company make? How much money on average is a classic phrase to indicate expected value? Because expected, we think of average, so kind of the average thing is the expected thing. And value, of course, there's no better word for that than money. So how much money on average will an insurance company make off a one-year life insurance policy worth $50,000? Okay, so whenever you think it's expected value, the first thing you should do is set up a table. And the table will list basically an X column and a P of X column. P of X being the probability of an event, x being the event. Now in expected value problems, the events are dollar amounts. So we're gonna be looking for, kind of in this problem, a payout amount and kind of a collected revenue amount, right? Those are the two important things. So um, before we do expected value problems and start filling in the table, I like to generally think about what's the controlling event that's involved in the problem. In other words, what about life insurance isn't really important in terms of the dollar amounts? So we know there are dollar amounts associated with life insurance, but what really matters in a life insurance problem? What's really the determining factor as to whether you get paid or don't get paid? Well, for life insurance, I think it's pretty obvious that the events are going to be whether you live or whether you die. If a person lives, you know, a certain a, a scenario occurs with the dollar amount, and if a person dies, a certain scenario occurs. So we're going to try to consider those two scenarios. But those aren't the only two scenarios. There's no in-between, right? For life insurance, either you live or you die, and that determines how much money is paid out. So in this problem, we're asked to do the, the, point, the problem from the point of view of the insurance company. So we're going to do all the dollar amounts from their point of view. Um, please keep in mind that um, the x here is like our dollar amount and this is like the probability of making that dollar amount right so that's kind of helpful just to indicate you know uh, what should go in these positions all right so let's think about it if you were to live at the end of the year so you survive the full year you live you don't end up passing away you know what does that mean for the insurance company well i'd say they're happy about that right because if you don't die they don't have to pay you anything right so you paid them $800 for the policy, and they don't have to pay you back anything because you lived the year, and that means that they're going to get a plus $800. And I'm writing a plus to emphasize that's a gain on their part. Now, in the event that you should die, this is bad news for the insurance company. Bad news for you too, right? But either way, if you die, the company's going to have to write your family a check for $50,000. Now, we can just go ahead and put minus 50000 here, but if we do that, we're going to be committing a mistake. The reason why we'd be making a mistake is that, in actuality, you don't really lose $50,000. Because remember, you went into this, the insurance office and paid $800 for the policy itself. Then maybe you left and uh, you were walking down the street thinking about your family and how you've just protected them in case you should die, and then bam, you get hit by a bus, right? You get hit by a bus, you die. The guy in the insurance office writes a check to your family for $50,000. But he's never returned the $800 back to you that you gave him for the policy. So the difference of those two amounts is actually what the company loses. So if you subtract $800 from $50,000, you get $49,200. And that's the loss that the company actually makes, $49,200. Okay, so now you have the two controlling events, and you have the dollar amounts that are associated with that. Should you live, the company makes $800. Should you die, the company loses $49,200. All right, now what's the probability of these two events? Well, the probability that you live the year is given to us. You're not expected to know that. It's provided, and that number is, it says 0.9999. Now the probability you die has to come from this number sort of, right? Because we know that the two probabilities together would add up to one, right? The total probability here, if you sum this column, that column would have to add up to one. We know that because essentially it's all the possibilities. Either you're alive at the end of the year or you're dead. So if you take one and subtract off this number, you'll be left with the probability that you die. And that probability would of course be 0, 0, 0, 1. So a very small chance that you die by the end of the year. Okay, now at that point, once you have those two numbers filled in, you've got the full table filled in and the rest is just calculation, right? So what I mean by calculation is to get the expected value, you have to do the following calculation, x times p of x, and then you have to add that together. So it's the final answer down here, the sum, that ends up being the mean, 
which is the same as the expected value for X, right? That's our expected value for the policy if we're the insurance company. So let's multiply 800 times 0.9999 and see what we get. So if I do that, we're going to have 800 times 0.9999. We end up with 799.92. So 799.92. All right, from there, what we want to do next is to multiply negative 49,200 by 0 0.001. Now, actually, this is the same as dividing by 10,000, so you can just move the decimal point over four places, one, two, three, four, and you'll end up with negative 4.92. Or you can just multiply it in your calculator and get the same exact answer. One thing I want to emphasize is that you have to really careful of is to make sure you bring over that negative sign. First of all, make sure you put it in the first place, but then make sure you carry it over because a lot of times that's the mistake that people make and they don't get the right answer down here as a result. So it's the most common error to be made, which is to forget to put the negative sign when there's a loss. Okay, so you subtract these two values and of course you'll get 795.00. So about $795 is your expected value per policy you sell. Of course, you'll never actually make $795 on a policy, right? You either make $800 or you lose $49,200 on a policy, right? But what happens is at the end of the year, once you look at all the money you've collected from these policies and you divided it by the number of policies sold, if you sold a lot of those policies, the number you're probably going to end up with as your average is going to be about $795, which means you can expect per policy you sell to bring in around $795. Quite a nice business.